good, good morning, everybody. So my name is Jordi Skiu. I'm working at the European Commission Joint Research Center as part of the GSC Inspire team, uh, together with uh, my colleague Marco Mingini, which is also participating and uh, contributing a lot in this conference. So let me share with you that uh, this is my first, uh, my first time in, the, in this conference, so I'm really excited. And I'm really happy to have got my T-shirt. So uh, I will be um, uh, presenting you on on the project that we are running uh, together with uh, Geocat. And here it's uh, as part of of this talk uh, I'm sharing with uh, Jerome Tickler from Geocat on the work we are doing on the revamp of the Inspire Geo portal. So. Um, we are both here, uh, and uh, I guess you uh, already know a lot of Inspire, so I will not extend on, on, on that uh, slide. So it's just the uh, a, a, a special data infrastructure for Europe, uh, covering the 34 uh, Inspire themes, and covering the legal, organizational, and technical framework. So. Uh, after all these uh, years, uh, the status of implementation is in, let's say, halfway. So, as Marco said uh, uh, in the talk uh, uh, before the keynote in, in this track, uh, there are some uh, lights and shadows. So, there are things that are, are working well and uh, are real benefits for, for the European geospatial stage. Uh, but there are also some issues that uh, uh, and shadows no? that uh, we are uh, working on uh, on improving. And uh, apart from that, th there is uh, uh, now uh, a new context uh, at European level, and, and this is uh, related to the uh, European Digital Society, which uh, has to cover uh, important needs uh, uh, from for providing uh, benefits to, to the, uh, the society, uh, the needs for digital innovation, for example, to um, provide uh, co better competitiveness uh, and, and many other uh, challenges that we, we have to face. So uh, taking into account this uh, emerging context of the European, uh, new European legislation that uh, is building on top of these needs, and also the, the experiences that uh, uh, we have learned uh, about the INSPIRE implementation during these years, uh, we have uh, uh, provided this uh, GSC Essence for, for Policy report that was uh, explained uh, by, by uh, my colleague Marco in the previous talk, uh, where we are explaining our vision, uh, our analysis on the, on the past uh, implementation of INSPIRE, but also explaining uh, in a very detailed way uh, the vision that we, we are willing to, to apply for, for the next years. So in case you are interested in, in uh, um, yes, uh, knowing more details about it, uh, please uh, look at the recording of, of the of this talk, and uh, uh, at the end, what uh, we are now uh, working on uh, is uh, defining the future for for Inspire, and this uh, goes uh, through the new uh, envisaged uh, sectoral European data spaces that uh, we are building on top of of Inspire. So. Uh, at the end, uh, um, different sectoral data spaces ha has to be built uh, uh, at European level uh, for specific sectors, uh, taking into account the use cases, the needs that uh, each of these sectoral spaces uh, uh, has. And uh, one of the, these sectoral data spaces should be the Green Deal, uh, which is the evolution of Inspire. And uh, here takes a, a crucial role also the high value data sets that are defined in the, in the open data directive and that, that uh, uh, will be uh, appearing very soon this autumn with the, uh, when, when the new uh, uh, high value data set implementing act uh, uh, is uh, entering into force. So uh, as part of, of the deployment of, of the of the Open Data Directive. 
So uh, now it's time to concentrate on what we have at, at the moment. So uh, th this is the future, the sector, all the spaces and the Green Deal, but we should uh, build on top of what we have achieved, uh, achieved at the moment. And um, uh, as far as of the Inspiratio portal and in general about the central Inspire components, uh, what we envisage in, in this uh, uh, report is that uh, we should uh, 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 be uh, building Inspire on top of uh, tools that are sustainable. So uh, we have to uh, take into account uh, which are the tools that are available in the market and not reinvent the, the wheel. Uh, so take the functionalities of, this, uh, of, of these tools and build Inspire on top of, of them. Uh, and here it's also very important and crucial to uh, build a strategic partnership partnerships with uh, the communities like OSGEO, uh, uh, open source projects like GeoNetwork, and uh, uh, focus, uh, focus our work uh, as technical uh, managers of, of, of Inspire uh, on the Inspire specificity and not uh, uh, concentrate our efforts in the GSE to, to uh, concentrate in mainstream tool de development. Uh, this will help on uh, providing support to the users and, uh, yes, uh, uh, take into account the, the emerging technical trends. Uh, so what we have at the moment is the Ispergeo portal that uh, many of you uh, already know. Uh, this was uh, totally developed by the GRC. And uh, the main focus of it uh, is uh, the monitoring and reporting process, which is uh, the process that uh, we have established uh, in order to get the information, harvest the information from, from the member states and uh, analyze it uh, and, and uh, also provide the, the indicators that uh, are used for monitoring uh, and analyzing the evolution and the implementation of the Inspire Direct. This is a, a yearly process that we are running uh, on behalf of the, uh, of, uh, the DG environment. So, uh, but now, uh, and this is what uh, we are presenting today, is uh, the project that we are uh, running right now about the revamp uh, Inspergeo portal, uh, which is uh, uh, having a backend, backend based on, on the Geo Network open source tool. So uh, the main uh, objectives of, of this revamp uh, are the migration to a Geo Network based architecture, uh, where um, we should maintain the current functionality of, of the Inspire Geo portal, what we have now, uh, all the functionalities uh, present in, in, in the tool. Uh, but uh, here, really important to, to provide some uh, uh, improved metadata, metadata harvesting process uh, and uh, particularly improve the performance of, of the harvesting process. This is uh, possible thanks to the use of the microservices that uh, uh, GeoNetwork is implementing in the latest versions of, of the tool. And Jeron will explain more details about it. Uh, uh, also provide uh, a harvesting dashboard for member states in order to uh, access through a uh, U-login-based authentication method uh, to the harvesting console in order to uh, start on their own uh, these uh, harvesters, uh, check the results and uh, publish uh, themselves the, the results once uh, everything is considered correct. And apart from that, uh, also maintaining the translations of the of the metadata using the APIs offered by the by the uh, translation unit from from the European Commission. Uh, an important point here is also the migration to a cloud environment, which uh, will help uh, in assuring the system availability and scalability. And uh, mm, finally, uh, contributing to the core. Uh, project of Geo Network, which is uh, something that, uh, so what we are willing is that uh, all these uh, developments that we are uh, uh, somehow uh, investing on uh, are available in the tool for any other purposes. So this is the um, snapshot of, of the new backend based on Geo Network. Uh, there was a prototype, you can see here in the, in the picture, the different harvesters. 
uh, that uh, we are having uh, 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 for each um, member state, uh, really for, for, for each of, of, of the endpoints uh, from uh, uh, your special catalogs that uh, are present in, in the different member states and NEFTA countries. And uh, uh, a prototype was, uh, was uh, presented uh, uh, and revised uh, uh, at the end of uh, 2021. And uh, in June uh, this year uh, was also delivered the working system and uh, the GSC tested it and we are now in the process of defining or uh, improving the, the system uh, together with GeoCAD uh, to, to improve the tool. And uh, this tool will be used uh, for the next uh, Inspire monitoring and reporting round. We are running with the member states uh, now uh, a testing phase, uh, which will be happening in the next months. So uh, apart from, from the backend, uh, the GSC is uh, providing uh, a new user interface where uh, we are taking the opportunity to add uh, a new filtering by high value data sets, which uh, will be only launched uh, when the new implemented act uh, is entering into force. Uh, but we are also, and most important here in, for this project, we, we are uh, providing additional developments to integrate the, this uh, new user interface with the new backend with your network. And now it's time to give the floor to Jerome, which will provide the, the in, um, technical details on, on the project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jordi. Thanks, Marco and the team at JRC, and also the GeoCAD team for all the work done on, uh, on the open source project. Um, I now have a challenge to run through technical slides in seven minutes. Um, so I'll skip a few. Uh, I think one of the most important things of this effort is that you see that you can use GeoNetwork from municipality level up to European international level. Uh, and this part of the project has been very specific to that reporting and, and analyzing harvesting of data. So what we've done is we've developed a, a number of separate uh, components in the GeoNetwork project um, based on GeoNetwork 4 and make sure that those components uh, run optimally very fast, I think a lot faster than the, than the existing uh, GeoPortal system, and uh, that those tools can also be used by member countries to then analyze their own uh, data before it's actually pushed out to the European GeoPortal. Uh, so there's a lot less stress, hopefully, when the reporting period comes, uh, because you've been able to test everything uh, by yourself before pushing it out to the uh, European GeoPortal in, uh, in December. So this is a quick overview of the architecture, um, probably the most important uh, slide here. Uh, what we have is we have in yellow the geo network system itself. Uh, not much modified in there. There's a few things, uh, especially in the UI, that we have adapted uh, to, to be able to see what's happening uh, in the back. And then we have developed another uh, component, which is an orchestrator, which is making sure that there's communication between the different microservice components. Uh, first step in the whole process of getting metadata from those countries, uh, from the member states, is that we harvest the CSW services that they have running, and those can be from uh, a couple of hundred records to uh, tens, tens of thousands of records. Um, and still the system has to be uh, stable and, uh, and analyzing them afterwards. Uh, we're depending on availability on the uh, far side, uh, obviously depending on our own systems uh, to run uh, correctly. And then the second step is to start analyzing all these metadata records, uh, as well as the services that are linked to that, and making sure that all those URLs are actually pointing to something useful uh, 
and actually something mandated by the Inspire Directive. So that link checker component is the second step and then there's an ingester component uh, that makes sure that all that validated uh, metadata as well as the uh, information about links uh, and availability go into the GeoNetwork application itself. Um, you can monitor this from the GeoNetwork application itself. You can configure it there also. And then at the end of the process, you can push the records into the public facing uh, instance of a GeoNetwork or of the Inspire Geo portal. <coughs> so, very quick here uh, there's the orchestrator that takes care of uh, making sure all the components do what they should do and in the time they should do this. Uh, there's a harvester console and we'll have some screenshots of that uh, where you can see what's happening so you can actually see each step uh, being executed and uh, report that progress to users. The CSW Harvester is a microservice that is able to go out to uh, multiple instances of catalogs of, of endpoints in Europe and harvest uh, effectively all metadata records there. Can be configured from the user interface uh, of GeoNetwork. There's basically a new harvester component listed in the available harvesters. You can define the URL of the endpoint, uh, a CSW filter, an OGC filter, um, and what to do when errors occur. Uh, it can do requests in parallel. We've, we're able to fine tune uh, how much load we put on the, on the remote instance uh, and how many records we do per request. So we're actually able to optimize, <coughs> sorry, we're able to optimize the harvest for specific instances, and there's some predefined configurations that you can select from. Uh, it's also able to look for nested discovery services. So in the catalog, you can find the record that points to another catalog, and then we're able to proceed in that harvest to that other catalog as well and analyze the same content. The output, XML records in the database. Then the link checker, a very intense process, intensive process. Um, all the records are, are uh, analyzed. Um, again, you can configure a number of things there in the, in the user interface. Uh, how far do you want to dig into links that you find, etc. Output, again, into the database. A complex data model. If you want to know more about this, <coughs> there will be a talk tomorrow by David Blasby, who's been putting a lot of efforts in that. So if you're interested tomorrow, very technical uh, presentation, but very interesting on his findings and uh, on the way forward. So a number of processing steps there. Uh, I'll skip this uh, because of time. And then there's the ingester service. So that service basically takes all the results from the uh, previous two steps and pushes them into a GeoNetwork uh, catalog. Then you can see those results. I can't see what slide is coming next, but uh, there's definitely one coming that shows what you see. Um, it creates all records, all information in, uh, in GeoNetwork and then indexes that in uh, Elasticsearch. So in GeoNetwork, it looks like this. Um, configuration settings, there's quite a lot of them. This is just a small view. Uh, you have a new entry there on the left uh, where you can uh, have a remote harvester, OGC CSW remote harvester. Uh, you configure the whole thing, uh, then start the process of harvesting, link checking, and uh, pushing metadata. You have a history of those uh, harvests. 
so you can see what happened today, what happened yesterday, what happened one month ago, and see if there's any improvement in what your results were. You can also see uh, statistics of those harvests uh, in the user interface, and you can click through those, clicking on the pass or on the fill, and then at the bottom you'll see exactly what records are filled or not, and you can actually start analyzing those results as well. So, last step, uh, data publication. Once everything has been reviewed, you're happy with the results, uh, they can be published to the external geoportal, uh, and you're basically done. So, I think I had uh, two minutes more, but thank you.